Wow, that's. Ooh, I haven't played this one for a long time. I just changed the strings. Oh, look at the strings. I haven't even cut them yet. I just changed them and I couldn't wait to just play something. So, let's get this back in the stand. Talk a little, little bit hats with you guys. It's been lately all music and no hats. Okay. This is a hat. Now, Generally, I'm, I've been wearing a shorter brim lately. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about brim size. Uh, generally, I'm kind of, I'm not going to say I'm associated with, but it, it's like most of the pictures that I'm in, I have a two and a half inch brim on. Now, recently I went from big, curly, long hair to short, you know, regular dad guy hair. And... All of my two and a, two and a half inch brim hats look 
kind of weird on me. They just don't look right. First of all, there's these big gaps because they're too big. Um, kind of like these side gaps because you know, like my hair was over there and stuff. And it just looks gappy. The hat looks good. Let me show you. I'm going to put on a, I have one behind the camera here. Okay. This is a two and a half inch brim. Just look at that. It's wrong, you know. It's like big gaps. It just doesn't look right. It looks like my, my face should be wider or something. Um, so what I'm getting at is that your tastes can change um, because of your hair. They can change um, just because your tastes change too. Um, but broom size is the most important thing when shopping for a hat. It's kind of like it gives the hat its whole look. It's all everything. Actually, you know what? I'm going to hold this guitar. It sounds ridiculous, but I miss it. Um, I haven't been playing this one for a long time. It actually had a little dust on it. cut my hair and now I went from a two and a half inch brim to a two. It's a half inch but it's a big difference in the hat world. When you're talking half inches it's like the difference between small brim, medium brim and long brim. Here's the deal. Two inches kind of like your short brim. It does go shorter. It goes one and a half, one and three quarters, uh, even one and three eighths which is a little bit less than one and a half. There's all different brim widths. Um, Essentially, there's three. Okay, here's the three. Small brim, medium brim, large brim. You can even say four. There's extra large brim, like oversized. Let's say four, okay? Small, medium, large, extra large brims. Small brim is a two inch. Easy to remember, right? A big brim is a three inch. So let's go like this. Small brim, like I've got on. Let's think Blues Brothers, Frank Sinatra, okay? Uh, Let's think, all right, I got it, okay. Small brim, medium brim, large brim, extra large, okay. The largest brim is gonna be a three inch brim, which you don't see a lot, okay. A three inch, oh boy, I don't even have one. I generally wear two and a half. A three inch is very showy, flamboyant. In a summer hat, it's a lot easier to get away with. A three inch brim is easy to get away with in a Western and an Outback, but a three inch brim, is bigger than a two and a half, and it's not that common. Generally, most companies go up to about two and a half in general. Okay, so I'm going to think three is the extra large, two and a half is the full size brim or large brim. That's like my green hat, that's what I wear all the time. Two and a half, let's call it a classic brim, a full size brim, large brim. Okay, that's like your typical fedora with the big, bigger brim. Kind of like this look, like a Humphrey Bogart type of thing. It's like a, uh, I don't know, sort of a film noir, uh, typical, you know, 40s uh, Indiana Jones guy, whatever. Two and a half inch brim is big, okay? Three is super big. Let's go down smaller now. Two inch is what I have on now. We can call that a medium brim. Sinatra. That's what I'm thinking. That's why I kind of rethought it. This is Sinatra, two inch brim. You remember he had that kind of short brim look, you guys know. It was a cool look. He tilted it a lot. Sinatra did the two inch. The Blues Brothers did the two inch up like this with sunglasses. I have my glasses. No, not really, but sunglasses. Uh, brim up in black as Blues Brothers with a coat like this. So it's an iconic. Actually, I have my black shades here somewhere. Yeah, put, they're not even shades. They're my reading glasses. Okay. So here's Blues Brothers, you know. The nerdy Walter White version, I guess, but, all right. Uh, brim up, black, you know, dark, dark shades, dark coat, you know. It's a very iconic kind of a bluesy, you know, the blues guy, the jazz guy. He wears a little black hat. It's also, it's conservative. It's business-like. The old men wear them a lot. Um, I'm not going to say it's a short brim. It's kind of like a good medium brim 
shortish brim that's overlooked by a lot of people. There's a lot of people that tend to go for the big brims and the tiniest brims, but they overlook that nice medium brim. Two inches, amazing. It's a great hat. Um, I'm getting really into it now. Uh, I think Jay-Z wears one. I saw him wearing one, a black one, and maybe it was a film he was wearing. And, uh, the two inch brim, again, it's very common, but it's, it's like this. It's a uh, it's your smaller looking hat. Let's call it that. Then there's a very, very small brim. We're going to call that size small on the scale of small, medium, large, extra large. That's going to be like a one and three eighth, a one and a half, and a one and three quarter inch brim. That's the teeny tiny tiny brim. Um, I think I was wearing a stingy brim in one of my older videos, one where I was uh, steaming a hat up. Is that was it? I think that was it. Do I have any stingies back here? Let me take a look. I have. You know, a lot of two inch brims. Okay, I've got tons of twos and twos and a half. I don't have any threes here with me at home. I keep them at work and I don't have any ones and a half. One and a half. But one and a half inch brim is the true stingy brim. It's a slang. Um, it's kind of like a slang. I don't know if it's from New York or Chicago or whatever. But a stingy brim, it's kind of like saying you're too cheap for a whole brim. It's a stingy brim, a cheap brim. You get it? You're stingy. Um, you're too stingy to afford the whole brim. So it's kind of like a joke, you know, an old 50s or 40s, you know, pun or something. Um, stingy brims are really cool. They got that really cool, like that ska look, that rude boy, cool, short, short, short look. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to look like a hipster. So, you know, I, I got to say, I've never seen an actual hipster wear it had that cool before. Generally, a, a stingy brim is very, very difficult to get. Uh, any hat that's like vintage and has like, you know, a one inch or a one and three eighths, a one and a quarter, just that tiny, tiny brim that's like almost no brim, you know, like this much, they're so hard to find. You know, even me, I'm working at like the biggest hat shop in New York, one of the biggest in the country, you know, maybe the world. I don't know how many there are in Europe, but. It's a huge hat shop. We're there for a hundred years. I'm there for 24 years, opening to closing, almost like, you know, every weekday I'm there. And I don't see those stingy brims. So I don't think the hipsters are wearing them. Uh, personally, you know, you see them wearing just dumb stuff like, you know, little checkerboard plaid hats or anything that looks like a little dumb, like look at me, you know. And I don't think there are hipsters anymore. They're kind of gone. You got these like other things now, like these beard guys. These like all these like young guys that grow these huge beards, and then like they they're not like hippies though. They just like dress like other stupid stuff. Like, but um, I don't think they have like um, hipsters anymore. That's kind of like an old uh, you know. That's like saying let's go listen to some grunge rock. From, like a few years ago, they have these other things now in like downtown Brooklyn. These sort of beard guys or whatever. Yeah, these like wannabe New Jersey guys who come in on the weekends, these weekend warriors, and you know they go woo, -woo drinking beer and screaming like on Second Avenue all night long on Friday, Saturday nights in Manhattan, and everybody in Manhattan hates them. They call them weekend warriors. They generally have those real trends, you know. Those are the guys that people who like you know live downtown and stuff. They're just like a little too hip for that hipster stuff. Um, what am I even talking about? But anyway, it, it, this is just like a common thing. A lot of people come in and like when I offer them a short brim, their their fear is like, okay, but I don't want to look like a hipster. I get what they're they're saying. They don't want to have that teeny tiny brim flipped up look. Well, guess what? The teeny tiny flipped up brim hipster thing is exactly the opposite when you flip the brim down. It's just kind of like a cool, you know, less is more neat, very neat, elegant, could be casual too. Uh, look at like the Stetson Inwood with the Stetson Asher on, on our website. It's just, pro actually it is the most popular uh, dress hat on our website, in our shop, this year, last year, maybe the year before. Uh, a short one and three eighths inch brim, that's shorter than one and a half. Now right now the public can't get enough of them. They're getting tired of huge brims and trendy whatever hats and they want something nice. They just want a nice good looking hat that they can wear without looking gimmicky or strange. And a, um, 
A 1 and 3 8 inch rim sounds extreme, but it's not. I sell it to huge guys with big fat faces, all kinds of guys, um, and it works well. Just flip the brim down, not up. Um, a lot of this has to do with the crown, too. Like, if you have a real little tapered crown like this and a big fat face, it won't work. But if your crown is big and wide and broad and stocky with a teeny brim, that could be fine, you know. Um, it's, it's not always like shoulders versus brim size or height versus brim size. There's a lot of factors. You've got to look at the hat with the brim, the crown, everything on the person and just say, how does this guy look? Does this hat look like part of his, you know, does it look like it's enhancing him? Like just part of him, part of his uh, image? Like, you look at, like, Tom Waits wearing a hat or somebody like that, you know? It doesn't look like somebody dressed him up for the photo in some dumb hat. Like, that's not him. It looks like it's his. It looks like the, it matches the rest of him, his clothes. It's messed up the same way his jacket is or something, you know? Uh, it's got the same taste as his other stuff. So you want to wear something that looks, you know, like me. I'm, I'm wearing this, like, you know, worn-in uh, vintage coat. I don't know when this is from. It's like some sort of, I don't know, you know? thrift store thing. Um, it looks like my hat. You know, they're both ruffled in the same way. They're both kind of earth tones. You want a hat that looks right on you, that doesn't look wrong on you. Now, that's a terribly generalized statement, but it's true. Something just clicks. When the hat is right, you're going big brim, tiny brim, boom, boom, boom. And then you hit it, it's like click. Um, it can be body English sometimes when the customer looks more at ease and he looks really cool with a hat. You could just say, hey, this guy's smiling. Look at that. He's into it. You could see he's starting to do stuff with it. He's like, oh, okay. So you can see what he's thinking by the way he moves. If he's kind of like this all tightened up and the hat is like that on his head, you just kind of like, okay, this guy can't wait to get this over. You know, he hates it, you know, but if he's like standing tall and doing these different poses and getting into, you know, you can just, you can feel when a person is owning a hat, when they're comfortable with it, when they just can't get enough of it. There's a difference between that and like, you know, just trying it on and you're looking in the mirror trying to make it work. But it just doesn't work. It never works, you know. You can see these things as a salesman, especially if you do the same job for like, you know, over 20 years. You get this sense. You can just, you know, like when the basketball player can tell which way these guy's going to break by just like looking at his muscle or his eyes or something. You know which way just because you do the job every day. And these little hints. I can see it in a person when somebody's accepting a hat and they're really loving a hat, you know. That's like, hey, you know, you made this guy's day and stuff. You know, wow. Um, there's, there's a difference. So look for that, that it factor. You know, it's corny and it sounds like cornhole or whatever. But it's true. Uh, when I have some hats on, they feel like, I don't care about this hat. I'm going to toss it in the corner. And I have other hats on, I feel like, okay, I better take care of this. I want this hat to last me forever. So, like my green hats, they're both almost always in a box, a single box, they're never double box. I have them protected in a good spot and the brims look great after 10 years, after 20, they look great. I have a whole bunch of hats like that. Then I have a stack of hats that look, you know, basically, you know, just kind of tossed around. Like you see the ribbon, you could tell I've been stacking it. I don't really care. Um, this is a hat that I like it, but not in the same way. I like this like I like an old pair of jeans, and I actually like this beat up a little bit. Um, it's, that's hard to explain, too, because it's sort of like when you have a whole bunch of hats, you know, let's say you have like 10 hats, and they're all really good and stuff. Sometimes you want a beater hat, you know, it's kind of like it's comfortable, it's softer, and you don't have to worry about it, you know. I, I like that. For me, I like to have some hats that I could just chuck around. But what I've found is that the hats that I love, like deep inside, that I feel attached to, bond, you know, like I have bonds with certain guitars, like this, um, this Les Paul right here. 
That's from 1972. I actually waited years to get it. I, I searched like, you know, this Reverb.com, eBay, Craigslist, the gear page classified, and there was one more. Uh, I forgot. Uh, it's another kind of reverb site. Um, okay, I forgot what that one was called. But I would search these websites every single day almost, you know, pretty much every day for a, a year, you know, two years. And I even had a cheaper Les Paul that I bought for like $600 just to tide me over and I knew I was going to sell it. Um, I searched and searched. This was very important to me because I had the same exact guitar when I was younger. Um, and I used to fly on that guitar, you know. I was way, way better when I was younger. I used to play all the time, and I played in bands and traveled, and I was just not rusty. And also, these days, I have problems with my fingers. They get stiff and stuff. But I was great on that guitar, and it just was, like, um, the most amazing thing. And at the very end, there was a headstock break, and the, uh, the frets were totally, like, worn down. The frets are these little, you know, wire here, they weren't bumpy anymore, they were completely flat from just, you know, rubbing the strings into them since 1972. Um, so the guitar was unplayable, it was just like, there was just so much damage, and so I got rid of it, and um, I started playing bass for nine years, and so when I got back into guitar, it was, um, you know, after my son was born, and I felt like I wanted to take a break, and I stopped playing music, but then, after a while, like pretty recently, I started playing again, and I needed to get that same guitar again. Um, I was at Woodstock in Bethel, New York, was it uh, that year, you know, the big Woodstock year. Um, I played at the Woodstock site, I have a, a cool video of that with the original one, not this one. It was exactly the same, except I took the pick guard off of it. It was the same year, everything about it, with the same modifications and stuff. Um, so it was so special for me to get that guitar. This guitar I have a bond with now, and I know I will never sell it, ever, ever. Um, the only thing I'll do is maybe give it to my son or something. No, that's it. Um, this one is really, really cheap. This guitar is super cheap. I traded a uh, guitar I got free for this one. These were 149 brand new. And uh, I traded kind of like a $50 guitar for it, which I had gotten for free. 